my biggest mistake that I could ever do. What am I talking about? Okay. So I've been doing photos for about doing photos. So I've been taking photography, taking photography. So I've been taking photos on something other than an iPhone for about five or so years. When I started out for the first two years, I used the Canon EOS 50D, and then in I think 2019 or so, I switched to the Canon EOS R. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I love mirrorless cameras, I love DSLRs, but there's something really cool about film cameras. And thankfully, a couple years back, actually, my grandfather, when he heard that I was actually starting to get into photography, gave me his Canon AE-1. I actually hesitated to use it for a couple of years, mainly because I think I was just kind of scared about using film photos because it's a lot more permanent and it's a lot more, I don't know, physical than, of course, what I've been used to with digital stuff. And so it wasn't really until earlier this year that I actually started to get more confident in wanting to start getting into film photography. And also part of me has just really been in the motions for a while using these mirrorless and DSLRs. And so I was like, okay, I think it would be really cool to kind of see where all of this had come from. And yes, am I obsessed with how this camera looks? Yes, I am. I take photos of it at every single point in time I can. And with film photography, I'm not gonna lie, it is a pretty expensive learning experience. Because when I was doing a lot of stuff with the DSLR or mirrorless camera, I mean, that's pretty easy. You can just delete the photos and try again, but you have to be a lot more purposeful with film photos. But before I show you guys how the photos turned out, I do kind of want to show you some cool history behind DSLRs, SLRs, and mirrorless cameras. Because why? Because it's cool. I'm gonna act like you guys are my target audience, like you're young, maybe not young, but beginner photographers who are kind of interested in getting into photography as a whole. So hopefully I'm gonna try to explain it in a pretty simple way, and if it's not, let me know. Because when I was a beginner photographer, I did exactly what you were doing now. I went to YouTube and I just looked up everything about everything photography related. So I'm not gonna break down the whole history of like what a camera is and all that, because I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know that yet. I probably should, but it's fine. But what I do wanna focus on is kind of the differences between like the modern film camera, the modern DSLR, and the modern mirrorless camera. Modern as in like in the past like 70 years or so. So like I said, you've got an SLR, a DSLR, and a mirrorless camera. SLR, that stands for Single Lens Reflex. So the single lens reflex cameras were kind of a novel idea in the 1900s because before that, there were not SLRs, but there were TLRs, which stands for twin lens reflex cameras. Lens reflex mirrors are basically what's to reflect the light that's coming into the lens, into the camera body that kind of goes up into the viewfinder. Like I said, the TLRs of the twin lens reflex cameras have been around for hundreds of years, but the SLR was premiered in about the 1930s or so by a German company. The SLR is the most rudimentary of the three as you have to actually like load in film and then everything is manual. And the only thing you actually need a battery for in the Canon AE-1 is for the spot metering. And the film is basically light-sensitive sheets that are exposed for a certain amount of time to kind of actually give the sense of the photo. Typically, each roll has 36 exposures, and the key here is, is that they have a fixed ISO. Moving ahead a couple decades, we kind of move into the DSLR era. Most of the actual body features are pretty much the same, but the main thing here is that now you can kind of switch the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture all within the camera with the screen. But the biggest change of information is kind of the use of CFAST, or SD cards instead of actual film. Now instead of all the images being transferred onto light sensitive sheets, everything is transferred to the image sensor into kind of a digital form. Both of those, I mean like compared to film cameras, had insanely high transfer rates and you could store more than just 36 pictures in an SD card. But now flash forward to today, most cameras are actually mirrorless. So as the world kind of moved into the digital age, there was kind of not really a reason to keep the reflex mirror. And so now with mirrorless cameras, the big difference, as the name suggests, it's mirrorless. It doesn't have a reflex mirror. So the actual images that are coming through the camera go straight into the image sensor and then are digitally projected into the viewfinder. And again, like most of the body stuff is pretty much the same, but I think the biggest difference is probably the exposure simulation. Because the thing with DSLRs is that when you're looking at the viewfinder, you're actually seeing things through real time. But then when you switch to an electronic viewfinder, you can kind of project what the photo is going to look like with whatever settings you have instead of the use of an actual viewfinder. So why go back and use film cameras if it seems like so much work? So I think it's a really cool challenge for me to kind of use the camera without having the help of like an exposure simulator or having SD card photo storage. So I shot my first roll earlier this spring at my college campus and I'm not gonna lie, I made some pretty big mistakes. Nine times out of 10, I kind of cheated and brought my own camera along with me and took a photo and I was like, okay, this exposure looks fine. And then I would take the photo with my film camera. Cause it's kind of expensive and I, I don't know, I don't wanna mess it up. So I'm looking back at these right now, like, they look fine. Um, some of them were good. I'd, 
applied some light edits to some of these. It was me just kind of walking around. I exposed most of these like one Saturday where like all the cherry blossoms were blooming. I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to shoot. So I kind of just shot everything. Oh yes, also my biggest mistake that I could ever do, don't go to CVS. I repeat, do not go to CVS. Every single one of these photo qualities are absolutely terrible. CVS does not let you get your negatives back and you have to sign off that you can't get your negatives back. So I'm not fully sure how the actual film process works, but basically what you can get back are these things called film negatives. And kind of as the name suggests, they're the inverted versions of the actual photos. And CVS is just like, no, no, you can't have them back. And the actual image size, I'm looking at them right now, none of them are exceeding like, three, 400 kilobytes. And that's the thing, depending on the actual film scanner that you have, you can have really high quality images, but it just depends on the actual development process that can determine that. So I took a couple photos of my friends kind of playing around with the exposure, playing around with composition, because I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.8, playing around with shadows, seeing how this camera deals with that. And some of the biggest things I learned from this first roll was again, one, do not buy from CVS and two, you typically learn in terms of general photography with DSLRs and with mirrorlesses to make sure that you over, not overexpose, make sure that you underexpose and not overexpose photos because it's easy to correct the shadows than it is the highlights. But it's the exact opposite when it comes to film. I came into this just really thinking that I was gonna to try to underexpose a lot of my photos and then I could fix it in post, but that's kind of the opposite. And so with the second roll, I actually tried to fix my problems. Crazy how that happens, oh my gosh. And to start, this photo was actually my first photo and my favorite photo from this entire roll. This is just a picture from my living room and I absolutely love the light that's just kind of coming in through the window. My dog is kind of sitting, staring at me taking this photo of him. I really like the shadows of the chairs and the windows just kind of on the floor. It just kind of just looks great. I'm just good. I'm just that good. I just I just love this photo. I don't care if nobody else likes it. I like it. Okay, and that's all that matters. I don't care if you don't like it. I want to talk about it, and that's why this is my YouTube channel. So be quiet. This photo here. This is me and my friends. <laughs> Anyways, huh. hmm. It was a short fake crack. There are like one or two more that I like, but for the most part, the other ones, they're good, but they still can be better. And that's one of the reasons why I really like this process. I mean, it's another reason why I got literally another roll of film almost immediately after I sent it into a different film lab. The whole beauty of this is just the fact that you have to take the photos and you have to wait and you have to make sure that you're more purposeful. And then it's kind of more of an important stored memory than just kind of a, you know, taking this, taking that. And I think that this whole process is kind of what makes the price worth it. It's the experience of really getting into the art of photography and learning how to capture everyday life. And that's pretty much all I had. And so hope you guys look forward to more stuff soon. Thanks.